As tensions continued to escalate between China and the Philippines over disputed territory in the South China Sea, Manila has devised a different plan to counter China. Interestingly, it centers around Beijing's kryptonite, Taiwan. To strengthen the country's territorial defense, Philippines Defense Secretary directed the military to increase the number of troops stationed at the northernmost island, specifically the remote Batanas Island. During the recent visit to the naval installations, the agency also called for the development of more infrastructure on the island which will be funded by U.S. These include ports that can accommodate large vessels and other facilities to be used during crises, including humanitarian and disaster relief. But here is a catch. The Batanas Islands are located just 200 kilometers or 125 miles from Taiwan, a self-ruled island state that China considers its renegade province and wants to occupy. The announcement made by the Filipino Defense Secretary comes at a time when China and the Philippines have been locking horns in the South China Sea. China has no business warning the Philippines about its activities in Batanas, the country's northernmost island province closest to Taiwan, when Philippine officials order to increase military presence in Batanas as they highlighted its strategic importance for the country. After several months of confrontation at sea and bombast by Chinese authorities, the Philippines is looking to bolster its military capability and strengthen its territorial defenses. The decision to boost troops and expand infrastructure at Batanas Island seems to be a part of that ambitious strategy. The Bashi Channel, which runs between Batanas and Taiwan, is a crucial choke point for ships traveling between the Western Pacific and the disputed South China Sea and is likely to be used by China in case of hostilities. The Philippine Navy opened its naval detachment on Mavulas Island in Batanas in October 2023. This area is also reportedly considered a potential location for the 2024 annual U.S.-Philippines military exercises. In November 2023, the Philippines and the United States started joint patrols on Mavulas Island, located 100 kilometers from Taiwan, and ended in the South China Sea. The United States was also granted access to a tiny island portion of the Philippines in the Cagayan region as part of the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, EDCA. Located just 250 miles or 400 kilometers south of Taiwan, Fuga Island could potentially be used to harass the southern flank in case of a Chinese naval attack on Taiwan. Additionally, it could be used by the United States for launching operations against China as it lies adjacent to two key passages, the Luzon Strait and the Bashi Channel, which provide access to the South China Sea and the Pacific. Reports have indicated that the U.S. may consider building a civilian port on the Batanas Islands. The Batanas region is a cluster of atolls and islets along the strategic Luzon Strait, a maritime passage and a vital conduit for undersea fiber optic cables. Unfortunately, it's also a crossing point for the Chinese Navy when they hold large-scale drills to intimidate Taiwan. In the event of open hostilities between China and Taiwan, there's no doubt large naval forces will either try to travel or even launch combat operations in and around the Luzon Strait. Although the Marcos administration has not explicitly stated how boosting the defense of Batanas will help its security, its National Security Policy 2023-2028, adopted in August 2023, warned that the tensions in the Taiwan Strait could end up affecting the country. The document said in very unambiguous terms that any military conflict in the Taiwan Strait would inevitably affect the Philippines, given the geographic proximity to Taiwan and the presence of 150,000 Filipinos in Taiwan. This is also why another regional power, Japan, strengthened defense ties with Taiwan. Japan's geographical closeness to Taiwan is predicted to drag Japan into a cross-strait conflict which might also see the participation of the United States. The Defense Department stresses that Batanas is Philippine territory, and China has no business, warning the Philippines about what it does within its territory. Last year, 
China also slammed the Philippines' move to allow the United States to rotate and store defense equipment and supplies in three of its military bases relatively near Taiwan under the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. The long-standing territorial disputes between the two countries have triggered confrontations between their Coast Guard ships, with fears of a potential Chinese invasion of the Second Thomas Shoal looming large over Manila. Chinese vessels regularly attempt to prevent Filipino vessels from replenishing their troops aboard the Sierra Madre warship, which was deliberately run aground several years ago and functions as a temporary Filipino outpost at the disputed shoal. In Southeast Asia, the situation in the Philippines, however, is unique. Among the Southeast Asian nation, the Philippines is not only a full-fledged U.S. defense treaty ally but it is also increasingly contributing to an emerging integrated deterrence strategy against China. Marcos Jr.'s decision to fortify bilateral defense cooperation with the U.S., barely a month after a state visit to Beijing, was doubly surprising. For starters, it ran counter to his initial push for a new golden era of bilateral relations with China and his longtime emphasis on diplomacy and balanced relations with superpowers. But even more surprising has been his decision to expand the parameters of the EDCA with a northern orientation toward Taiwan rather than a western one towards the South China Sea, where Manila and Beijing are at heated loggerheads over contested territories and features. The bulk of the new bases under the expanded EDCA are located in northernmost Philippine provinces, namely Cagayan and Isabela, which are notably distant from the South China Sea Theater. Crucially, the two allies have also expanded joint exercises with a growing focus on the Philippines' northern shores. Philippine authorities maintain that any cooperation with the Pentagon is primarily geared toward economic and civilian purposes. The port in Batanas, for instance, is supposed to enhance connectivity between the relatively isolated province, surrounded by rough seas and regularly battered by monsoons, and the rest of the Philippines. As for facilities in other northern Philippine provinces, authorities insist that any U.S. support or rotational presence will be primarily for humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations. But those facilities could also be dual use. For instance, EDCA facilities built for potentially housing humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations related hardware such as cargo planes could also, in theory, host fighter jets and more offensive oriented weapons systems. Beijing will see any U.S. move to build up ports and facilities overtly military ones or ostensibly civilian ones in the Indo-Pacific as a hostile act as they can also be used to support any potential U.S. intervention over a Chinese use of force against Taiwan as hostile. In particular, China fears that the U.S. is trying to build an island chain of dual-purpose facilities around Taiwan to more effectively respond to any potential continency over the self-ruling island that China views as a renegade province that must eventually be reunified with the mainland. For now, the Marcos Jr. administration has been sending mixed signals on its stance on the Taiwan question. During his trip to Washington last year, the Filipino president equivocated on his country's potential contribution to an integrated deterrence strategy on Taiwan. In contrast to top Philippine military officials, who publicly admitted the possibility of joint operations during a contingency, Marcos Jr. has been adamant that the country's defense posture is primarily defensive and not pointed at any particular country. Nevertheless, the trajectory of the Philippine-U.S. defense cooperation in recent months suggests that the Southeast Asian nation is gradually preparing for any armed conflicts, either in its exclusive economic zone or in its neighboring waters. Starting 2024, the operational tempo for the AFP, Armed Forces of the Philippines, will be higher, the Philippine Defense Chief said during his recent visit to the Philippines' northernmost military facility in Batanas, as far as the northern baseline is concerned. The Philippine Navy described the unprecedented visit by the Philippines' defense chief, who was accompanied by the AFP chief and top admiral, as signifying a pivotal moment in the nation's commitment to territorial defense and national security. The Philippines will implement countermeasures, proportionate and reasonable, against illegal, coercive, aggressive, and dangerous attacks by China's Coast Guard and maritime militia in the South China Sea.
This is according to President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. in response to the frequent face-off in disputed waters in the West Philippine Sea, damaging Philippine vessel and injuring personnel on board. Though the Philippines did not specify what the countermeasures would include, but it could lead to military confrontation which spark war in the troubled waters. Marcos said he met his defense and security officials and has been in communication with friends in the international community. The deterioration in relations with China come at a time when Marcos seeks to deepen defense ties with the United States. He has increased U.S. access to Philippine military bases and joint exercises have been expanded to include sea and air patrols over the South China Sea. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin last week reaffirmed Washington's commitment to a 1951 mutual defense treaty with the Philippines and criticized as dangerous China's actions at the Second Thomas Shoal. The Philippine-U.S. Treaty binds both countries to defend each other if under attack and these includes armed attacks to Coast Guard, civilian and military vessels in the South China Sea. The deepening territorial disputes in the South China Sea involve conflicting island and maritime claims by several sovereign states in the region. And the increasing tension between mainland China and Taiwan, with Beijing stepping up its efforts to assert its sovereignty over the island, as part of one China policy. The increasing military activity in the Taiwan Strait, and fears of more tension and competition in the South China Sea, as Beijing continues its relentless building and military operations. These equate disparity, in peace, and national stability, of the whole of Southeast Asia. While ASEAN member states have different individual positions on the South China Sea issue, this effectively prohibits the ASEAN members from unifying their influence in a joint effort to solve territorial disputes collectively. The sovereignty of the Philippines was the first ASEAN member to be directly affected by China's military expansion in the South China Sea. With lesser economic influence and military power, the same thing as the rest of the region. Outside help from the international community is much needed to secure the peace and stability of the region. An irreplaceable U.S. ally for seven decades, the Philippines has long been at the forefront of preserving the free and open regional order in Southeast Asia and the greater Indo-Pacific region. The mutual defense treaty between the Republic of the Philippines and the United States of America, signed in 1951, serves as a foundation for the close security cooperation between the two countries. 72 years after its signing, the alliance continues to thrive in the ever-evolving security environment that surrounds the Philippines. The U.S.-Philippines Mutual Defense Treaty evolved into the 1998 Visiting Forces Agreement VFA, and the 2014 Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement EDCA. The VFA provides the legal basis and status protections for U.S. military and Department of Defense civilian personnel in the Philippines on official business. While EDCA authorizes U.S. forces to access of agreed locations in the Philippines on a rotational basis, for security cooperation exercises, joint and combined military training activities, and humanitarian assistance and disaster relief activities. <laughs>